Okay, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing a disassembly of this Ruger PC 9mm carbine. All you need for this disassembly is a Allen key. Screwdriver isn't necessarily needed but is helpful. And that's pretty much it. This is actually a very simple rifle to actually break down and take apart. We do this of course by just removing our magazine. It's uh, clear and safe there. Now, the gimmicky part about this rifle is that it comes in part in two. The barrel detaches from the rest of the rifle. In order to do this, you pull down on this lever here. and twist it. Note that the bolt has to be pulled back in order to do this. After that we can take apart the front portion of the gun by removing this allen key here. This little screw. To further take this apart there's another key and another screw in here you need to take apart and there's another one behind this pin and spring here all you have to do is unscrew this this pin comes out and the spring comes out and I believe there is another screw underneath there to take this off there's not really much reason to ever take that off I've done it once just to see how it comes apart but there's no need to it this part right here is just to ratchet it in, make it a little bit more stable, tighten on to the fore portion of the gun, and loosen it up, tighten it. A little gimmicky, but some people like that. I could take it or leave it, to be honest. Let's take apart the rest of it here. Again, all we have to do is start by taking these two screws out. They do make uh, different PC carbines with different stocks. Some of them now have uh, pistol grips, some of them have free floating board ends which are probably going to be different to disassemble than this. I imagine a lot of the innards are probably going to be very similar to this, but I imagine the stock is going to come apart much differently. That aside. Be careful when taking apart this because these pins have a tendency of sometimes just slipping out. There's really no tension that's actually holding them. All you do is just push them out. They're not very hard pins at all to push out. This part. If you want to further disassemble this, you can push out this spring to take out the hammer. Not really much point of taking apart anything in here. Note that if you do depress the trigger and release the hammer in this stage, the uh, spring that holds pushes the hammer will be loose and free to just come out and fall out. There's a hole back here that it just fits inside. This little piece right there is actually part of it, the following follower in there. So don't really need to take that apart any more than it already is. I want to take this off. We got to remove the charging handle. This charging handle is reciprocating. One of the nice things about it is you can put it on the left or right side. I think it's a little bit nicer than the kel having it up here on the forward left or right side of the rifle instead of being underneath the kel -Tec. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, let me grab the kel real quick. 
This is a charging handle to the Keltec Sub 2000. It's back here, kind of in a, kind of in an annoying place, and it does reciprocate, reciprocate also. So that is the Keltec for you. If you're curious about that, you can look at my video that I did on the Keltec. And if you want to pull out this part here, there is some little trench grooves here. It's kind of helpful if you use a screwdriver to pull it out. You can sometimes just grab on there with your fingers and pull it out. My gloves are a little bit slippery, a little greasy. Now when removing the bolt, out, sometimes these pins have a tendency of falling out so be careful that you don't lose those when you pull it out of this top receiver here and these pins here remove recoil spring and then we can further remove these pins I like to use a screwdriver to kind of help wiggle them out. Sometimes they do like to fall out. They're only held in there under spring pressure from this little bolt face here, which I'll show you how that's under pressure. To remove the ejector or not the ejector, the extractor, get the rest of this out. You see this bolt face here just sort of comes right off and is under pressure from the firing pin and firing pin spring, which is right in here. Firing pin spring, firing pin. Firing pin holds uh, this weight back here in place. So you can't remove this weight until you remove the firing pin. So just note that the row with the two rows of holes there should go on top when you put this in. This should go in first with all the little holes in there. Firing pin is going to sit in there like that. Anyway, that's it. Uh, this is pretty much fully disassembled. Um, on this upper receiver, if you want to take this apart any further, you can just by taking out these Allen keys here, here, and here. This portion will come out. Not much of a reason to really ever take that out unless if you just want to see how it works. Anyway, let's uh, put this back together. For those of you that don't know, this is really just a buffer weight for the bolt carrier. It's not really heavy enough on its own to really cycle. That's why it looks a little goofy with the holes drilled out in it and Looks like it's just kind of added at the last minute. Maybe there was uh, some reliability issues or something when they were first designing these little carbines. Now again, these pins will fall out, so want to hold them in there when you're putting the extractor back.
just slides right in. Just drops right in there. Make sure that you don't get this part in the way there. Push down on this rear part here like that. If it sits up, it won't give you enough room to put in your fire control group. So make sure you just push down on that very lightly. Pins back in. Again, these pins do have a tendency of falling out. I was going to show you that these little chassis come out and these are what basically allow you to change over from different magazines. These ones are set for block mags. Uh, there are ones that take Smith & Wesson and Ruger. I'm not sure which other ones they take. I've never used them. I've only ever used a Glock just because I have Glock magazines all over. Real nice, real easy. All you do is just push on the mag release and it comes right out. Put it back in, pull down on the mag release. A little wobbly in there, but it's actually a pretty reliable system. I haven't had any problems with any magazines or any feeding issues. The only problems I've ever had is maybe with ammunition. Screw back in stock here. The controls on it are very similar to a uh, Ruger 1022. You got a very similar bolt stuck catch here and uh, safety and fire control. Charging handle. Do a quick function test. Everything's working. Let me show you that trigger real quick. Trigger on this is a little bit nicer than on the Keltex. Very short travel. Reset. Again, it's a pretty decent trigger for what you're getting with the. Uh, these little carbines put together the board assembly. Lock the bolt to the rear. And keep tightening down on it. And there we have it. That is the Ruger PC carbine.
I will see you in my next video.